Hey there everyone, my name is Eduardo Arroyo, but you can call me Ed, and today I am here visiting Dinosaur Ridge near Morrison, Colorado. Yes, you guys, you heard that right. Today we are visiting Dinosaur Ridge, ranked as one of the best dinosaur track sites in America. The goal for today is simple, to tell you a little bit more about it and to show you around so that you know what you'll find if you choose to visit. So if that interests you, come with me. I am so excited to be here you guys. I have always considered myself a huge fan of dinosaurs. Uh, I always love the movies and the documentaries, including that legendary documentary series by the BBC, Walking with Dinosaurs, and of course the first Jurassic Park film, which captured everyone's fascination with these creatures. Today I am visiting a location that is very important for dinosaur and fossil history. Right at the entrance of the main visitor center right there, you are greeted by this really cool sign with this huge dinosaur at the top which I can only assume is a T-Rex and the words Dinosaur Ridge written on it. How cool is that? In the parking lot, you will see another sign of Dinosaur Ridge alongside some dinosaurs. There's also plaques right here that give you a little bit more information and background on the dinosaurs in this play. For example, this one right here is a Stegosaurus. And according to this plaque right here, this dinosaur right here in a very striking pose is an Allosaurus. I think from the different dinosaurs that I've seen so far, this one is the best looking one, especially for taking pictures. Check it out, it looks like it's creeping right behind me. Here in the parking lot, you will find another version of the Stegosaurus, except this one looks to be very patriotic. And I think this is a trend because I see a third one right here. So what is the main attraction here at Dinosaur Ridge? Let me tell you, it is a hike, a hike where you will be able to see dinosaur tracks and fossils. Sounds pretty cool, right? Because it is, they offer different options. You can do a self-guided tour, which is you walking on your own uh, with an audio device that tells you a little bit more of the sites that you'll be visiting. They also offer a guided tour with a volunteer or a, an expert um, to tell you a little bit more uh, as you go through the sites. And lastly, they also offer a bus tour. If you don't want to walk or if it's hard for you to do so, that might be the best option. That is the little booth where you get your ticket tickets for either of the three different options that I mentioned. Uh, there's also a ticket that you can purchase here to uh, access the exhibition hall which is right around the corner. So this is where we are currently. This is the main visitor center and it goes all around this area right here all the way to another sort of visitor center um, location where you can rest before making your way all the way back. Now it's time for us to check out the exhibition hall right over there. Inside of the visitor center you will see more replicas of dinosaurs. This one right here is of a Camarasaurus, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And check him out, he's standing right here in the middle of the exhibits. There's also replicas of tracks that have been found in the area, just like this one. More fossil replicas right there. And you can actually see the dinosaur that these belong to. <laughs> Check it out, there's also a pterodactyl right there in the ceiling. More exhibits now with images. This one I think has to be one of my favorite uh, dinosaur designs. It kind of reminds me of Nessie. And right here you can actually see the replica of its skull, which is fascinating. There are also very cool exhibits just like this one with information on how this area looked millions of years ago. Very interesting and cool. Mm -hmm. 
So make sure to check the exhibition hall. I think it's a great primer or introduction before you go on your hike. And it's only $3, so support them that way. Actually, if you buy the bus ticket, I think I heard uh, the exhibition hall is included as part of that ticket. All right, you guys, it's time for us to go on our hike. You can actually get there uh, right from the visitor center with no problem. It's about a five minute walk, and that's exactly what we're gonna do next. Check it out, you guys, that area over there with the trees, that is where the main visitor center is located. That's where we started our walk. It's been five minutes and we are located right here under this canopy area next to a map for a very good reason. So it is supposed to rain today starting at 2 p.m. But at 12, it started pouring out of nowhere. And I started seeing people like still walking, you know, it was like drizzling like a little bit. And I started seeing people going up and I was like, well, I guess this is normal here in Colorado or something. But then I started coming up uh, until I reached this canopy area and it started to, to pour, like I said. You could see families with their like, little kids, little babies, all soaking wet coming back from the hike. It was, it was something, I tell you. So let's keep going. Let's hope that I don't get trapped in the middle of this hike in the rain. Check it out, you guys. So this is the first point of interest in our hike today. The first thing that catches your eye is not dinosaur fossils, it is not dinosaur tracks, right? I don't see any of that, but what I see a lot of are these really interestingly shaped rocks. What these are supposed to be are fine layers of mud that have been preserved in this form, which would indicate that this place was covered at one point by water. And according to the sign, that is one piece of evidence that would indicate that there was an ancient seaway approximately 92 million years ago going through this area. Isn't that just fascinating guys? At one point in history, the plesiosaur was hunting its prey right here in what is now covered by mountains. That is wild if I do say so myself. And check it out, you can see all the side over here covered in that ancient mud check it out you guys i found this track site right here although this section does not have an information plaque or anything so there's not a lot i can tell you about this place you can see the tracks up there of some sort of like smaller dinosaur they, they look very similar so maybe it's the same dinosaur but maybe they're babies or something I just found a bigger track site. This one even has like a sitting area with a canopy and they have information plaques right there. The tracks look similar to the ones we saw over there. So hopefully we'll gain more insight on what we saw just a few minutes ago. Check it out you guys. In this plaque, it tells you that you will find the tracks of three different organisms scattered all throughout this uh, area right here. The first one is of a hadrosaur or a duck-billed dinosaur and I think those are the ones we saw earlier. Uh, they have a very specific shape like that one, like that one right there. I think that one even counts and that one over there as well. The other two track marks are of an ostrich-sized dinosaur. I don't think I've seen this shape just yet but we'll look around and see if we can find it. And the last one is of a six-foot crocodile which I haven't seen just yet either. But let's look around and see if we can find it. As you can see, the tracks of the hadrosaur are what dominate most of this area, but there's still a section that I wanna check out right over there. Actually, boom, there's a tile right there that tells you that that is a track of a six foot crocodile. That's pretty cool. I can barely see it to be honest, but it's right there. According to that tile, that is the track of an ostrich sized dinosaur. That is actually the first one that I've seen. I wonder if we can find more throughout this area. Based on the information that I've seen around this place, the reason why these tracks are so well preserved is because this used to be mud or mud sediment. So when the dinosaurs were walking by, their footprints were basically imprinted. And I'm guessing there were a lot of other weather and geological factors that came into play for this to, to happen, right? But I'm glad it did because this is an amazing sight to behold, a place you have to check out and see for yourself. Check it out, you guys. This area might not seem very interesting or noteworthy, right? It kind of just seems like the rock has been scratched and chipped away, right? But apparently, according to that plaque right here, these are the track marks of worms from millions of years ago that have been preserved right here. 
that's kind of crazy to think about and kind of gross if I do say so myself. Check it out you guys, if you stray away just for a little bit from the trail, you'll make your way to this really cool overlook. Let me show you. You will see this canopy sitting area and if you turn this way you'll see BAM this amazing view with those hills over there in the distance and you actually get a nice breeze. It's been hot most of today and being on the edge it allows you to get some of that nice and cooling breeze. If you are tired then you can sit right here under the shade. And one thing I wanted to mention before heading out again on the hike is that the rocks that are under the shade here they actually stay cool. So once you sit down it feels really nice. Another thing I wanted to mention is the fact that we are very close to another very interesting location that I would like to visit in this trip. That is the Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater. That location looks amazing. The images of it that you see online are almost majestic. So I want to go there and check it out for myself. I mentioned this because of course I want you to stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in me making that video and also because you can actually get there from here. Check it out you guys, so that is the Dakota Ridge Trail. That trail takes you all the way from here, from a Dinosaur Ridge where we are currently located, all the way to Red Rocks Park. I don't think I'll do that today, it looks more intense than what we are doing today. This is more like kids play, if I do say so myself, but I just thought it was interesting to note that you can actually get all the way to Red Rocks Park from here. This plaque is talking about volcanic ash and how it was settled and sedimented on this part of the mountain. And you can actually see it right here. Let me show you. Check it out, you guys. They actually sliced a piece of the mountain so that we could look closer, which in itself, it looks really cool and fascinating. But that little section is what we are concerned with. That is the section uh, with the volcanic ash that was sedimented over a period of 30,000 years. That is insane. Of this visit, I really enjoy the fact that these sites are open air and the fact that you can get super close to look around and you can even touch the site to see how it feels and stuff, the different types of rocks. It definitely makes you feel like a paleontologist or geologist, which is awesome. Apparently we have another overlook over here. Let's go check it out. Check it out, you guys. This is the Front Range Overlook. And one thing that I didn't even know that you could do from here is to look across to Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater. I thought there was going to be like a mountain in between these, but this, this is really cool. So that is a place that I'm planning to visit in an upcoming video. Stay tuned to the channel if that interests you. For now, this view is just amazing, like with the mountains, the hills in the distance. This is what I came here for. Over here you can find another track site, although a very small one, it is also a rare one as the plaque here indicates. This is the track of a Velociraptor and it is right there, I'm going to zoom in so you can see better, bam, right there you guys is the Velociraptor track. Check it out you guys, I found another track site and the unique aspect of this one is that you can actually see the tracks from underneath the surface. So as you can see, they cut out a piece of this uh, hill right here so that we could see the different bulges created by the dinosaur steps, right? So these are the depressions created on the surface and we're looking at it from the bottom right here. That is a very interesting and unique perspective to view these from. So this is really, really cool. In the very last section of this hike, you will find a dinosaur bone quarry with actual dinosaur bones still encrusted in the rocks and stones. Let me show you. Check it out. There's some right here, including this one. And you can see still like way deep into the stone. And this rock is very tough, um, I've been told. So I could imagine what it takes in order to get these out and not damage them. There's some more right here, as you can see. I don't know what this is supposed to be necessarily, but check it out. Then we have two other little ones, one right there and the other right there. As you can see, the bones are a little bit darker than the rock they're surrounded by. And check it out, there's another big bone right here encrusted in this huge rock, as you can see. I wonder if they're ever going to excavate these and take them to a museum because they're actually really big. 
and the last one is right here check it out and you can see still probably goes more like deep into the rock so i'm sure it would be very tough to get this one out as well And just like that, you guys, we made it to the end of today's video, to the end of the Dinosaur Ridge Trail. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys liked the video as much as I did, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel if you wanna check out more cool and interesting travel videos just like this one. And just to remind you to always be kind, have an open mind. I'll see you next time.